Hi there, my name is Dr. Sarah Wooten. I am a small animal veterinarian with over 16 years in practice and well over 20 years in veterinary medicine. And I am in this video today, courtesy of cats.com, and I'm going to talk to you about feline immunodeficiency virus. Feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV for short, is a retrovirus that is seen in cats. It's a cousin of HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, which you probably know causes the condition AIDS in humans. FIV is very similar to uh, HIV. In fact, these guys are kind of in the same family of viruses. They're called retroviruses. Uh, the good news is FIV is not transmissible to any other species other than cats. So it's not an infectious risk to you or any other dogs or anything like that in your family, but it is highly infectious to other cats. And so it's really important to know about this virus and know how to protect your cat from it. It's mostly seen in cats that are mostly outdoor. And in fact, it's mostly seen in cats that are feral. So these are cats that don't have homes. And one of the things that cats do, especially male cats that still have their testicles, so unneutered, they like to fight. Um, so they're either biting uh, or scratching each other. And it's these bite wounds uh, that transmit FIV from cat to cat to cat. FIV uh, can be passed through the placenta from a queen to their kitten in utero, much less common. And it has been seen in semen, so theoretically it's sexually transmitted. But to be honest, in the veterinary world, I always just see it as transmitted via bite wounds. And it's almost always the cats that are brought in by animal control, which is our local animal police authority. They'll bring these wild cats to us. And if they're a fighting Tom, which is a fighting male cat that still has testicles uh, and they have bite wounds or they, these cats come in, they have a fever. They just look scruffy. Um, their skin just all looks crunchy and scruffy. They often have conjunctivitis and runny nose and all kinds of secondary infections. And I can look at that cat and go, um, that cat has FIV. Because it's just a really classic presentation. They're often infected with feline leukemia virus at the same time. And I know that because we test these cats when they come in. So FIV is typically passed through bite wounds. It's mostly seen in outdoor male cats that are fighting but it can be seen in any cat. No cat is immune to FIV. It's usually um, about the middle-aged cats. It's not very young, not very old. It's those middle-aged males that are out there fighting that are getting FIV. So FIV, if you know anything about HIV, then you know that FIV is a retrovirus that works by disrupting the immune system of their host. So basically it goes in, it tears up the immune system from from the T cells to the macrophages to all the white blood cells, all of the cells, um, and it tears it all up and makes it so that the host can't fight off of secondary infections. So cats that are infected with FIV are asymptomatic until their immune systems are destroyed and then they are exposed to secondary pathogens like bacteria and fungus and other viruses. And then those secondary pathogens, the bacteria, the fungus, the other viruses, go in and wreak havoc on the cat's body. It can affect all the systems in a cat's body, including the gastrointestinal system, where it can cause vomiting and diarrhea um, and tumors. It affects the dental system. Um, it can cause a lot of gingivitis and periodontitis um, and stomatitis, which is just really big, red, inflamed, infected gums. It affects the skin makes the skin more susceptible to secondary infections. So you'll see these cats come in with skin infections and ringworm, just crusty, they look really crusty. It also affects the respiratory system and the ocular system. So we already know that cats have a whole host of viruses that attack their noses and their eyes. If they have FIV, then they're much more susceptible to those viruses. So these cats often have runny noses, runny eyes, coughing, sneezing, uh, corneal ulcers, all kinds of stuff. Often causes fever. It can cause enlarged lymph nodes, either due to infection or tumors. And where you'll usually see them is like right under their jaw and they'll have some swellings on either side. You can also um, check them in their armpits 
or on the back of their legs. And then in the end stage uh, version of this disease, it just causes chronic wasting and, and muscle loss and weight loss. So it's slowly progressive, severely debilitating, and um, kind of a nasty disease. So even though this disease is slowly progressive, there is no cure, basically. Um, the thing is, is these cats that are infected with FIV, they can remain asymptomatic for years. And they don't start to show symptoms until the virus starts affecting their immune system. And so a lot of these cats can go years without having any kinds of problems. They're just checked regularly by their veterinarian. And what I found is with the right care, with appropriate care, so seeing a veterinarian regularly for all the other stuff, making sure to um, do high quality nutrition, take care of their dental disease, it's a big one, um, and then just overall care, these cats can have really good quality of life for a long period of time. But once they start to show symptoms, then they tend to slowly go downhill and they will need chronic care from you. A lot of these cats that have been my patients, they've gone on to live nice, long, happy lives, five, six, seven, eight years, no problems. Um, the things that you have to remember with FIV is it's highly infectious to other cats. And a cat that has FIV is susceptible, more susceptible to every other pathogen in the world than, than a normal cat with a healthy immune system. So if you have an FIV cat, it is best, veterinary recommendation, they live indoor only, don't go outside. There are no other cats in the household because you don't want to infect any other cats. And um, that you don't take them outside because that's where all the other pathogens, viruses, bacteria, fungus, all those things are that will attack your cats. So just leave them in the house. They can live a nice long life. It's even better if you have the veterinarian come to your house. And then the only other thing is making sure to feed them high quality nutrition. Um, to have them vaccinated for other diseases, but don't have them vaccinated with modified live vaccines. So that's like your feeling distemper, your feeling combo, um, those kind of vaccines. So. Your veterinarian should know if your cat is FIV positive that you're only using killed or inactivated vaccines in that cat. Because theoretically a modified live vaccine contains live bits of virus and in a cat with an altered immune system, that theoretically could cause disease. It's also a good idea to get them on a high quality fish oil supplement because fish oil contains omega-3 fatty acids which are very anti-inflammatory in nature. Make sure to be uh, meticulous with their dental disease because that is a often an area of infection in these cats. And then if you do ever notice any signs of sickness in these cats, in a normal cat you could be like, eh, I'll wait for a day and see it gets better. And an FIV cat, you want to get that checked and get them on medication as soon as possible because their immune system can't deal with it. How is FIV diagnosed? It's usually typically diagnosed with a very quick blood test that can be run in most veterinary hospitals. We have a test that's called a FELV FIV SNAP test. FELV stands for feline leukemia virus, FIV for feline immunodeficiency virus. This test can test for both of those within 10 minutes. We just get a quick blood sample from your cat, run it through this test, and then it pops up with a series of dots that tells us whether your cat has antibodies to these diseases or not. If you have your cat tested, which I believe that all cats should be tested for feline leukemia and feline AIDS at least once in their life. Um, a lot of people who do take their cats outside or take their cats different places, they get their cats tested once a year. If you are bringing a new cat into your household, Quarantine that cat and make sure that they are negative for feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV, and also FELV, feline leukemia virus, with this simple blood test before exposing them to your cats. And then the other thing with the blood test is um, if it does come up positive, don't panic. It's not a death sentence. This test can show up as a false positive especially in kittens that are younger than six months of age because they can get a maternal transfer of antibodies from their mother that can give you a false positive on this test. Have them retested again in one to two months. Don't automatically assume 
just have them retested. If you have an adult cat and they come up positive for this, again, take your precautions, make sure they're quarantined away from any of your other cats, but have them retested. Any signs of sickness with this cat, you go to the veterinarian and you get them treated immediately. They'll be treated with probably antibiotics or antifungals. There are some antiviral medications out there like Retrovir. Uh, there is also alpha interferon, which is a, a drug that can be used to boost the immune system. So ask your veterinarian if those are available for your cat or a good option for your cat. The other thing you wanna make sure is a high quality fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, very, very, very beneficial for cats with FIV. Um, high quality nutrition, the best you can afford, and then get them checked yearly because you wanna make sure that you catch anything when it's really small. So remember, a dental infection might not be such a big deal in a normal cat. In an FIV cat, it can be a really big problem. So get anything checked early and you could live years with this cat without having any issues. Just take really good care of them. As far as prevention goes, there is a vaccine available. It's called Filovax and it's made by Fort Dodge. Um, and it really has variable efficacy. It can be really effective or not effective at all. I don't know many veterinarians that use it on a regular basis because it is so variable in its effectiveness. And if you think about this in human terms, they haven't really can't come up with a good vaccine to prevent HIV either because retroviruses are tricky. They're tricky little viruses. The best thing you can do to prevent FIV in your cat is to make sure that they are not outdoors unsupervised and fighting. So if you have an indoor cat and they are FIV negative and they're not fighting with other cats, they're not gonna get FIV. So keep your cat indoors. Make sure that indoor space is enriched with lots of scratching and climbing and playing. If they go outside, make sure it's supervised time. And if you are caring for an FIV cat, well, bless you, you are an angel. You have a special needs cat that could potentially give you years of companionship. Thank you for caring for this cat. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon with more veterinary advice for you.